If you were to come to a fanatical prospecting boot camp, it looks like this. I walk in the room and I go, you have 15 minutes to make $15 and set one appointment, go. So you talk about uh, you know, sales, uh, having a science behind it. Mm -hmm. What is it right here? You talk about uh, efficiency, effectiveness equals performance. Mm -hmm. so, so I can see the person you know, getting ready to get ready <laughs> and then they never execute. Right. Right. And so it, it, when, when you're coaching salespeople or you're coaching the sales process, what are some of the dynamics you're keying on as you observe people role play or as people you're observing them in your, in your business yeah. in the cubicles or in your virtual Zoom? What are you observing some of the qualities you're coaching people? Well, I watch for, you know, for, um, um, for, first thing is, are you doing it or not doing it? Like you're planning to plan to plan to plan. Like are you rearranging your desk so that your pen is facing due north? Because we all know like when your pen's facing due north, rejection's sweeter. Like we know that. So are you planning to plan to plan? So, so when I'm coaching people, if you, like, if you were to come to a fanatical prospecting boot camp, it looks like this. I walk in the room and I go, you have 15 minutes to make $15 and set one appointment, go. People look at me. And I think military, right? So, because yeah, yeah. I walk into battalions and do this in the military, and like usually there's a command sergeant major sitting next to me, he's so like, yeah. like he's right behind me. So I'm like, I look real tough, but he's like push ups if you don't do it. This, <laughs> this guy's. But what I do is I just I put people in a position where I've, I don't allow them time to think. So I watch them, and I'll, they'll look at me, and I go, 15 minutes, 15 dials, one appointment. Now you'll notice. It's all about what, how I say it. I'm confident. Like nobody goes, like leaders will say, how do you get people to do that? I'm like, I'm Teflon. No, they can say anything. They'll go, oh, I don't really have my list. That's okay. Pick something in your phone. Sure. I, nobody's going to be calling. I mean, nobody's going to be at office right now. That's okay. We're going to do it anyway. So what happens is when they do it and they just call and they're terrible at it. But somebody gets an appointment. Three or four people get an appointment. They go, well, that wasn't that hard. I'm going to go, yeah, well, it wasn't hard. Well, we weren't thinking about it. You just made us do it. I go, great, right? So most of it was in your head. And then we picked up the phone and we called some strangers and it worked. So then I'll just teach people how to do this. So then I'll look for, are you hesitating, insecurity? Um, you saw us on stage where, you know, it was just changing a little bit of the way that people, you know, approach mm -hmm. each other. So just something like, you know, um, how so? Like a little question like that. How so? How come? Like, how do you mean? Yeah. Little questions like that to get people to engage. So I'm coaching language. I'm coaching approach. Yeah. You just said, I like the way you approached it. I, I'm, I'm approaching, are you relaxed? Are you assertive? Are you confident? Or do you look and come off as insecure? Are you, are you talking about yourself? Are you having a conversation with them? I'm sorry, I hit the mic there. Uh, are you talking about yourself or are you talking about them? So it's, I'm, I'm just, I'm coaching the nuance. Yeah. So I teach frameworks. Here's how you make a prospecting call. Here's how you approach someone. Here's how you deal with an objection. I teach the framework, the set of rails, and then I coach the nuance. But first, I get out of the head right? Yeah. And get into action. Because yeah. because it didn't make a difference if we're thinking about it. If we're not doing, it doesn't make a difference. So we got to do first. It's funny because, you know, uh, of course, you've seen the movie of you know, Wolf of Wall Street. I mean, mm -hmm. what salesperson has, right? And the reason why he says I do the exercise is I want to know whether or not you're trying to pitch me or you're mm -hmm. asking me. Yes. That was the purpose of it. Are yep. you trying to sell me the pen or are you asking me if I want to buy a pen? Yep. That's the purpose of that simple exactly. exercise. Here, here's the biggest question I get asked all the time. Hey, Matt, how do you, you know, what do you say when so-and-so? What do you say when so-and-so? What do you say when so-and-so? They always ask me what I say. But I never get the question of what do I ask? Yes. So it, it, would that be a big paradigm shift? 80% of, of selling is discovery. <laughs> which is asking, right? 80% of sales, like this, you know, if you start thinking about what's, what's the sexy parts of sales are closing, getting past objections and prospecting. That's what everybody wants to talk about. Sure. What nobody wants to talk about is what's most important, which is the middle part. Yeah. So in every sales conversation, the person that you're having that conversation with is asking five questions of you. Now those questions are being asked at both the conscious and subconscious level. Sure. Do I like you? Yeah. Do you listen to me? Do you make me feel important? Do you get me in my problems? Do you understand me? And do I trust and believe you? Well, the easiest way to be likable is to shut up and listen. Like you don't have to worry about anything else. If you're listening to people, they love you. The easiest way, the way to make someone feel important is to listen to them. The easiest way to demonstrate that you get people is to talk about their reasons for buying life insurance, not your reasons, yeah. right? So, yeah. so if you were telling me your story, right, you communicate in stories, I go, tell me about your family, tell me what's important to you, and you go, blah, 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 and I, and I, and I go, so what I think I hear you saying is that the most important thing for you in the entire world is that if something were to happen to you, that your wife and your young son would be taken care of and okay. Like you worry about that more than anything because of your job. Did I get that right? 
Yes. And you would say, yeah. And I would say, I totally get that. You know, when I was a young dad, you know, I, 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 the thing that, that was I was most concerned about is that I would go on a trip and I wouldn't come back. And then, you know, what would happen to them? And, you know, I could see in my, in my, you know, in my head what the future would look like without me. And, um, and I, that's one of the reasons why I stepped into a life insurance policy, because it gave me some peace of mind that I, I was stepping up to the plate as a man and doing the right thing for my family. And um, so tell me a little bit more about, uh, about what you and your wife talk about when it comes to your financial future. So all I did was just take your story, right? I repeat it back to you in a way that says, hey, I get you. Those are my words. Right. And, and, and at the more that, that I'm able to, to demonstrate that I get you, the more likely you are to trust me, right? So because all, all, all we're really doing is you're saying, hey, I trust and believe what you're saying to me. And this makes sense, right? So if it just makes sense, why wouldn't we go ahead and do it? And, and what most people are doing is, salespeople are doing, especially new people, you think that it's about the gift of gap. Like you think that it's about talking. It is not about talking. Nobody cares about what you have to say. They only care about what's important to them. And I want you to think about this for just a second when you start thinking about discovery and asking questions. Because you're exactly, nobody ever asked me, what do you ask? They always ask me what I say. And I'm like, you're asking the wrong question. Because it's not what I say. It's what I ask. Because anything that I say is a derivative of something that I've asked. So another way of looking at that is the question that you ask is more important than anything that you could say. And anything that you say is more powerful and impactful when delivered in the form of a question. So just think about that. So I want you to think about in your life, right? Um, is there someone that you would describe this way? This person totally gets me. Sure. Okay, who would that be? My wife. Okay, your wife. So your wife totally gets you. Now you think about the relationship you have your wife, right? And I met your wife, and she's lovely, <laughs> right? She's wonderful. Um, and so, so like you and your wife probably have this like secret language, right? So sure. yeah, and so you can look at each other and have a conversation. My wife and I have the same thing. You um like you nobody knows what you're thinking, but you you know what you're thinking. Like my I've been married for almost thirty years now. I can look at my wife and I know exactly what she's thinking <laughs> from across the room. Uh, you you probably tell jokes that no one else gets but you. Of course. Yep. You laugh all the time, and and it's like it's this relationship where you just it just it's comfortable, like it feels right. Yeah. That's the most important relationship in your life. Mm-hmm. Get. A person who gets me, it's, it's, it's more valuable than anything else that you have. Now, if you just think about sales for a second, do I like you? Do you listen to me? Do you make me feel, feel important? Do you get me in my problems? Do I trust and believe you? Demonstrating get, I get you, is the key to everything. Like it is the secret. It's called a bridge, right? So what all I'm doing is I'm connecting the dots between what's important to you and how I can solve that problem for you through insurance mm-hmm. using your language, not mine. Like I'm, I'm coming back to you. I'm not talking about insurance. I'm talking about what's important to you. Right. And, and I, what I'm doing in the process is I'm, I'm creating that same emotional bond. Now, it's not, it's not like being married anybody. You're never really going to have that type of a bond with someone you're selling anything to. Sure. But the same emotions, the same psychology is there. And when people do that, and if you just think about stuff that you've bought, when, you, when like the person demonstrated that they really got you, yeah. that was the moment where like it just happened. Like Everything flowed downhill from there. Sure. So what I'm doing in Discovery, the questions I'm asking, right? I'm, I'm prospect to have the opportunity to do that. Prospecting is asking about time right? Are asking for time. Sales is asking for commitments. And we, the, the, the two things are different, but I can't ask for commitments until I have time. If I'm on a prospecting call and I'm doing discovery, I'm in the wrong place. Get the meeting, sit down with someone, have an opportunity for them to have a conversation with you. But then when I meet them, don't pitch. Right? If you're pitching, you're losing. So what I do is just sit down and say, tell me about your family. Tell me what's important to you. They know why you're there. I mean, there's not like they don't, it's not a secret. Right, right. So I even asked the question, like, why I'm selling insurance. Like most people run from insurance, people who some people sell insurance. Why would you sit down with me? Shut up. My goal in a conversation is to ask. Right, you overcome an objection before it even comes. Exactly. To, well, it's a 600 pound gorilla. Yeah. You know. Why would you meet with me? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been thinking about this. You know, I've been doing this or, you know, my, my mom and dad, you know, died recently, or this happened, this happened, this happened. And then, and then all I'm doing is allowing you to talk. My goal in any conversation is to ask as few questions as possible to create as much information as possible. And what I'm doing is, as I ask questions and get people to begin telling their stories, 
I reward the story by listening to them, like by leaning into it, by paying attention to it, by repeating what they're saying to me. And by doing that, I trigger something called the self-disclosure loop. And the self-disclosure loop is um, just the way the brain works. It's a neurophysical response to a person basically revealing pieces about themselves. You've noticed this at a party. You've sat down to have, at a party. You've had a conversation with someone, and you're just kind of in a listening mood, and they're just mm-hmm. talking, 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 talking. And like pretty soon, like they keep talking, and, and there's this moment when they cross the TMI zone, and you're like, OMG, I can't believe you just said that. And you know that's happened to you, right? You're like, I can't believe. But they, and they knew that they shouldn't say it. You've done it too, right? You, they knew it, but they said it anyway. And then they kept going. Yeah. And the reason that happened is because as they were self-revealing, they were getting a dopamine hit to the brain, which is essentially brain crack, right? They were just getting, and, and so it's kind of like if you drink, if you drink too much, like the alcohol does the same thing. It, 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 it you, 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 you say something and it just feels, it feels good. Like you, you get de-inhibited, I guess, or inhibited, I guess is how you say that. Same thing happens. You get a little brain, brain crack, a little dopamine hit. And you keep talking, keep talking, keep talking. Well, if you just let people do that, like if you stay out of the get way, dopamine, right, dopamine, stop dopamine. pitching, don't ask close any questions, you know, reward them for talking with you. They'll tell you their entire story. They'll give you everything. And then all you have to do, this is how you, you, you demonstrate, you get to, all you have to do is just build a bridge. You say, I totally get it. You know, your, your, you know, your, your, your term insurance policy that you've had for 20 years is running out. You don't know exactly what to do. And you, you and your wife are a little bit nervous because you've got, you know, another, you know, 25 years left Mm -hmm. and you're not quite sure what's going to happen. And, uh, and if I were in your shoes, I'd probably feel the same way. And that's really what I want to do today is just explore how we might be able to fill that gap and give you guys the peace of mind that you're looking for and stay within your budget. 